ओके सो इन द लास्ट क्लास वी हैव सीन द परचेज रिक्वेजेशन सो आफ्टर द परचेज रिक्वेजेशन हैज बीन क्रिएटेड और आफ्टर द परचेज रिक्वेजेशन इफ द वेंडर इज अनोन सो वी नीड टू डू द वेंडर इवेल्यूशन और वी नीड टू फाइंड द सोर्स राइट सो फॉर दैट वन वी नीड टू क्रिएट द आर एफ क्यू ओके so for rfq we can see the what is the uh, let's say img settings for the rfq so let's go to spro material management purchasing rfq or quotation so here we can go to the same number ranges here you can go to the intervals here you can add interval if you require to add any interval you can add it over here okay so we are not changing anything we will go with the standard or existing one here you can see the number ranges are from 0 1 to here you can see these are the number ranges already available okay so if you want to create any number range then just click on interval just add a new number range that should not be overlapping with any other number ranges okay or if required you can also delete the number range also from here but in the real time system it is not advised to delete any kind of number ranges okay now let's go back next one is define screen layout or document label so this is basically your screen selection so here you can see there is ana is there this is the field selection for request for quotation okay so we can select this one and go to the details here you can see there are field selection groups are there as per the field selection group you can change some of the fields to mandatory to required entry or to any kind of display you can change it okay or if you want to um, if you want to create a custom document type for uh, your request for quotation then you can also copy from the existing screen selection and you can create a new screen selection okay let's say we are selecting this one and we are clicking on copy and uh, let's say we are taking this let's say we are taking this rna okay so here we can select go to details here you can change something if you require let's say plant is a mandatory entry or required entry okay let's say storage location is also a required entry okay let's say okay so let's say the currency is a display feed okay let's take this one as the enter it back now save this okay so we have created a new field selection now we can go back here we can go to define document type so here you can see there is an is the rfq document type if you require to create a new document type you can also create it you can copy it from there let's say we are taking z r a n okay okay so number range is 60 external number range is 61 here you can define the field selection what we have taken we have taken r a n a okay you can take this one okay now just save it okay enter it copy all
ओके okay so now select this one and now select this one and click on the allowed item categories okay so here we can see it is only selected as subcontracting third party and service okay so so let leave it likewise okay if you want to add something also you can add it okay go to new entries let's say you want to add the stock transfer process so let's say you okay can enter it okay so now let's go save this one okay now click on link purchase requisition purchase requisition okay so now here we can see the document types are selected this ec foin itnb these are the document type that has been selected okay rv is there nv is there tsnb is there znb is there okay znb is there right so everything has been copied from the standard okay so now let's save this one okay now let's go back so this is all about your request for quotation document type okay so now let's go back one more thing is there maintain quotation comments okay so let's say you are rejecting the quotation you have received the quotation from multiple vendors you are going to reject the vendors from any kind of reason so there you have to mention some of the reason why you are rejecting that vendor or why you are rejecting that quotation okay so you can mention some of the comments so here we have created these kind of comments ab1 ab2 ab3 so rejection for this one and uh, okay for your price or quality or delivery time okay so if you want to create a new comment also you can enter it okay and if you want to go with the existing one you can also go with the existing one let's say we are creating one new one let's say we are taking r2 let's say for let's say delivery time is not uh, feasible okay let's say this one we are creating a new document type okay so this is all about your rfq img settings okay now let's create a rfq okay so for that one we have to go to slash n from here we can go to logistics mm purchasing then we can go to rfq quotation then we can go to request for quotation here we have me 41 as create okay click on this one so here the rfq type is n you can select your rfq type this one is our rfq type language key rfq date 
next one is a rfq uh, sorry quotation deadline so we are creating this rfq data as today when we require this quotation to be submitted so let's say we need this on by 5th we need this okay let's say by 5th we will be needing this quotation deadline okay so purchasing organization purchasing group okay so next one is Okay, so now here you can see this is a collective number field is there. So what is a collective field number? So normally let's say we are having multiple RFQ were sending for a single material. So let's say for this material, which material we have taken for this material, we need multiple quotation or we are sending multiple requests for quotations, okay? Now, while comparing the quotation, what should be the common element or common key will be there. So for that one, we can enter a collective number over here. Okay. So that collective number, whenever we are going to compare the quotation, we can just enter the collective number over there and it will search as per that collective number, whatever request for quotations will be there. So it will be searching for that one and it will find the quotations for that one and it will compare that, okay? So here in SAP standard, this is a manually entry field, okay? You have to enter the collective number manually, okay? So let's say we will be entered. Let's say we are entering some number as 212, okay? So here you can maintain the validity start, okay? So what should be the validity for this quotation? Whenever you are sending the RFQ, then you will be receiving a quotation. So till when the quotation will be valid, let's say from today or from fifth, this is the deadline date. So from this one, we will start the quotation and the validity end will be let's say for one month we are taking this as a validity okay so now enter this one now you can enter the material okay let's say one three four three okay rfq quantity is let's say 100 or 1000 whatever things you can enter it over here so you can enter the plant and you can enter the storage location. Okay, now, here this is the submission deadline, okay? And you have to enter a delivery date, means when you need this product. Let's say we need this product at 10th or let's say on 11th we will be requiring this material okay so you have to enter the delivery date later than the submission deadline date okay so whenever when you require the quotation after that only you will be needing the material to be delivered okay now let's enter this one okay so now you have to click on the vendor address okay So now you have to select the vendor, which vendor you are sending this RFQ. So just enter. Uh, let's say we are sending to this vendor. Sir, one question. Yes. Uh, sir, we, we have create RFQ for new vendor. Yes. Is it right? Then how we create the vendor? If we don't know the vendor name. 
we know the vendor but we don't know the vendor price or anything right so whenever you are going to let's say purchase any kind of uh, let's say you are going to purchase a mobile so stores okay. will be there right your market will be having the store it is not like that stores will be not there and you are going to purchase it right so stores will be there you have to go to the store and you have to ask for the price right so vendors will be already there so you just have to select the vendor you do it will be not like you don't know the vendor or vendors will not be there vendors will be there so first thing you will be having the vendor you just are asking the price for the vendors okay whatever price for the material you are just asking for the quotation okay you are not going to search for the vendors understood okay okay so now just go back okay now click on the messages now we have to enter the output type so here we can see this one let's say print output okay now just understand this is the first time so this is the output type okay so we need to send this request for quotation to the vendor okay so how we are going to send this so for that one we need to have a output okay so we need to do the output for this document type okay so here we have taken this is this is the standard output type for the any kind of output let's say purchase order purchase requisition or let's say your uh, uh, request for quotation for everything everything it is the standard output type okay if you want to create a customized output type you can also create we will be looking into it when we will be going to the output determination then we can see how we can create a new output type how to assign that one okay so basically this is the output type then here we are having the medium so how you are going to send that document either you can print it and send it to the vendor or you can send to the fax you can fax it you can do some of the telex or external send or edi okay or let's say simple mail you want to send it over the mail or any special function or any kind of let's say ale distribution so these are the different method we will be looking into it later okay so basically these are the format or these are the method in which we can send the document to the vendor okay as per the document uh, as per the vendors options whatever options they are having we can send it to them okay so this is the function function means it is your vendor function so whom you are going to send you have to go send it to the vendor okay so that's why we have selected the vendor and language you can maintain the language also as per your customer requirement or as per your business requirement you can maintain the language so let's say your uh, business or your vendor they are in in different countries they are using a different um, languages so you can maintain a different languages over here okay so now next one is communication method okay so we have selected the print output so where we are going to print it so this is lp01 is a logical printer here we can see the print output we can see it okay or if you are working in a like real environment or you are working in a real project then there will be some printers will be assigned for the user you have to select that one over here okay now let's go back so here you can select 
next one is your further data okay so here how we are going to send this document type okay so dispatch time it is the dispatch time or processing type so how we are going to send it first one is here there are four options are there first one is send with periodical job okay so with respect to a background job so let's say we are having let's say per day we are having hundreds of rfq will be generating and it will be sent to the vendors okay so in that case what will happen we will be having a background job in the background job automatically those outputs will be processed so we can send it through periodical job okay next one is send with job with some additional time specification let's say i can mention after this request for quotation is created after 15 minutes there will be a job will be running which will send the request for quotation document to the vendor okay that is also possible third one is send with own application so if you are selecting this send with own application then after saving this rfq then you have to go to a t code which is there for output do the output for the rfq you can go there you can do the output over there you can just select the document number and you can select the output type and you can do the output last one is send immediately send immediately means once you are saving this document we are just entering over send immediately and if we go back we will just save this one so it will directly create the print output so we have selected as print output so it will select as it will process directly okay let's just see this one so we will go to 43 okay enter now if we go here messages here we can see this is showing as green if you select this one click on further data here you can see successfully processed right so go back if you can see select this one click on processing log you can see the processing it is processed okay processing log for program routine entry a new message outputted under the spool request number this one this is the print spool request number okay so just have a basic idea on this output don't worry about it it is a topic it is a separate topic okay which we need to understand how we are going to configure this output because most of the document we are going to send out from the sap so for that one we need to configure this output type functions and everything we have to configure so we will be looking into it in a later phase okay now just go back so we have created the request for quotation now let's say we will create a new request for quotation so we need to create multiple request for quotation right so that only we question, will... sir. yes uh, sir it is same for the uh, different vendor or rfq is different number for a different vendor it, it will be a different number right okay. we are creating a new one uh, can we uh, can you create multiple type of material in a single RFQ? rfq multiple materials right yeah multiple materials are possible here you can see there are multiple entries are there you can uh, multiple you can, can we multiple vendor no in a single rfq no only one vendor we can add add over here okay okay we are not selected the price in this rfq it is automatically shown we are requesting for price so how we can enter the price okay right. our base price is not mentioned no why should we maintain the base price okay they will be providing us the material there only from there only we will be getting the price 
ओके ओके सो हियर लेट्स से गो टू द वेंडर लेट्स से वी आर सिलेक्टिंग दिस वन okay so now we have created two rfqs we have created okay so now we have to maintain the quotation right so for that one we can go to either you can go to either we can go here and we can click on quotation over here and here we can go to ma47 maintain it there okay just double click on that and here we can enter the rfq number okay for this rfq let's say we are having the 21 so for this now you can see the there is a net price field is here okay so now here you can enter the net price so whatever prices are there let's say we are entering this as a 10 rupees okay now let's enter and save now enter let's say 22 so you have to enter as per the quotation price you have received from the vendor you have to enter this let's say 11 rupees okay now let's save this one so now we have maintained the quotation now what we can do we have to compare the prices okay now let's go back so here we are having me 49 as price comparison okay now just double click on it so here either you can take the quotation from and to okay so if you are going for any kind of quotation you can maintain all of the quotation number you can maintain let's say we are taking no problem so we can enter the quotation number over here let's say this one is the quotation number from here to here we can take these two and we can compare it from the quotation or we can remove these two and we can enter the collective number that we have entered so collective number we have taken as 212 okay now we will take this 212 and execute so now you can see we have not taken any material vendor or anything we have just entered the 212 number and it is showing for that one we are having two quotations right 21 and 22 we are having these two quotations okay so now here you can see this will be compared this is a price comparison so in sap standard comparison will be done as per the price basis okay there is no other criteria for that one let's say quality standard delivery time nothing is there only you have to compare the vendors as per their price criteria so that's why it is called as price comparison okay so now as per the price it is saying this is the rank 1 vendor okay and this one is the rank 2 vendor right so we are getting this is the rank 1 vendor this is the rank 2 vendor so now if you want to add this price as a market price let's say you are getting this as a 10 rupees and you want to say so this is the market price okay so you can also maintain this as a market price so you can just right click on this and you can see save as market price okay save market price you can just click in and you can maintain so price from quotation this one will be saved as market price just click on okay okay so now we have compared now we have to we have selected our vendor okay 
as per the price we have to send this vendor as a this vendor will be selected for the material and we have to send the rejection letter to this vendor okay so now this vendor is selected and we have to send the rejection letter to this vendor okay so now how we can send this rejection letter we can go to ME9A. Okay. So here, this is also the same T code for doing the output. Okay. So this is also the same T code for doing the output. Let's say in here. Okay. So let's say here you are going and let's say here we have selected this for the data as we, if we are selecting send with own transaction if we are selecting this one send with own transaction then after saving this rfq we have to go to message output this me 9 t code we have to come here and we have to enter the document number and we have to enter the application type and here we have to enter the message type what is the message type? That was NEU, right? The message type was NEU. So NEU type, we have to enter it and processing status. Here, there are three types of status are there. Zero is for not processed. So first time you are going for output, you can click on zero and you can execute on this one and you can execute, it will create an output. If it is processed and again you want to process it, then you can select successfully processed as one you can select and you can execute if it is not processed and means it is incorrectly processed then you can select this one and you can do a reprocessing okay so these are the status so now here we are going to send the rejection letter to the vendor so for that rejection there is a message type that is called absa okay absa is the message type now let's enter this one okay. i believe the application type is different Okay, okay, fine. Okay, so now we have to go slash and ME 47. Okay, we have to enter this vendor. Now we have to select this rejection indicator. Okay, so now we have to select this rejection indicator. Just enter. Now save it. Okay. So here we can go to further data. So here, let's say we are going to send with own application. Okay, we are just in selecting this one. Okay, right. Now save this one. Now save this one, okay. So now we can go to the, okay. So now we can go to the, so now we can go to MA9A. So here we can enter this one and we can enter this BSA. So just execute. Now we can see this document line is coming. So you can select this one. Either you can 
click on the display message also you can click and you can see what is the letter is showing over here so you can see you can see this is the vendor so to this vendor we are sending this rejection letter okay now we can close it so now you can select and you can click on output message okay so now we can see now we can see the message has been outputted so there will be a green tick will be coming if it is not processed correctly it will be showing you let's say red button or it will show you a yellow warning also it will be showing over here if there is any kind of errors are there so now our message has been outputted right so if you go to in quotation let's say let's go to here enter now you can go to the output here you can see the rejection quotation rejection has been sent to the vendor okay so now we have sent the rejection letter to this vendor to this 6006 vendor now we can create the purchase order with respect to our 6005 or like 6005 series number we can go with it okay so that is all about your quotation request for quotation quotation and price comparison so we have selected the vendor so vendor selection process is complete now we have find our vendor to whom we are going to send the purchase order right so in next class we will be looking into the purchase order and what are the details of purchase order okay understood or anyone having any doubt any questions okay sir if you are having any questions also you can ask tomorrow okay so bye for today we'll be connecting again on tomorrow